you. So it is my pleasure to welcome one of our last speakers on. We have today with us international student Sophie and Jonathan. They are sophomores at International School, two of the five co-founders of Climate Change Collective, a youth-run organization creating a series of educational conferences for the fall of 2019 to spread awareness on global warming. So I'm going to give it up to them. U.S. pulls out of Paris Climate Agreement. FEMA expels climate change from strategic plan. Trump mulling major cuts to clean energy research. Climate change website censored under Trump. Skeptic claims climate change is fake science. Youth climate change lawsuit delayed. These are the headlines plaguing our news. Our government has failed us. The effects of climate change are already prominent. Sea levels are rising, the coral is bleaching, famine and drought are increasing across the world. When we see photos of islands being swept away, pictures of children starving, and videos of forests being destroyed, climate change can feel like a faraway threat. It isn't. In, in November, fires devastated our state, California, from Malibu to Calistoga. Thousands of homes burned down. 14,000 brave firefighters plunged into the flames. 98 people lost their lives and thousands of kids missed school. Miles away from the fire, a deep, toxic smoke blanketed San Francisco. There were three weeks straight of hazardous air quality, classifying San Francisco the worst air in the world. This it's just one of the horrifying symptoms of climate change that are directly affecting us. And if we do not act soon, things will accelerate beyond the point of no return. We know the UN has estimated that we have 12 years to save the earth before the changes are irreversible. That does not mean 12 years until it is always warm outside and there are fewer bees to sting you. That means 12 years before the earth spirals out of control. 12 years before we are bound to a world where wildfires like those in California are always burning. 12 years before we are doomed to an eternal sky of gray. 12 years before glacier melting is unstoppable and the sea level rises so high it swallows cities whole. 12 years before we sentence our earth to death. 12 years before we sentence ourselves to oblivion. As a youth movement, 12 years might seem like a long time, but it isn't. Being young, we have the most at stake. We have our whole lives ahead of us. I want to live past 28. I want a chance to make something of my life. I want to live to have a family. I want to live to have a career that I can be proud of. We all want our futures. We all deserve to finish the lives we started on our own terms. If we do not protect our earth, we will never have the future we have worked so hard for. Every person, no matter who, what, or where they are, should have a right to earn the future they want. Now is our time to fight for that right. We have grown up in a divided government one with clear lines between Republicans and Democrats, one where our party defines us. But we need that to change. Climate change cannot be a partisan issue. This cannot be another war between Republicans and Democrats. We do not have time to hate each other. In 12 years, it will not matter what party you are in. The earth will be past the point of no return and everyone, I mean everyone, will face the consequences. To quote the great Dr. King's timeless words, we are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. What affects one directly affects all indirectly. If we are going to do this, we cannot pick sides. Everyone has to do it together. There is no time to hesitate. Complacency and confusion, debates about whether or not climate change is real, will destroy us. As miners, 
We cannot vote, but we can take direct action. We can make changes to our lifestyle and use our roles as consumers responsibly, or protest and pressure our government officials. As consumers, if we boycott companies and goods that damage the environment, we destroy the market for those goods, and corporations will be forced to produce products that reflect the values of us, the consumers. So do not buy food with palm oil, eat less meat, avoid plastic, use LED lights in your house and use renewable energy to power them, take public transit or ride a bike, dispose of your waste responsibly by recycling and composting. legislation protecting our planet. Laws that support green energy and ban disposable plastics. Laws that restrict coal mining or greenhouse gas emissions. You can do this through phone banking and writing letters or strikes and protests just like the one that we are at right now. If we cannot vote on the ballot, we will vote with our feet and march in unison. Our voice is strong and politicians will hear us. They will listen and we will make them change. If we are not given a microphone, we will take one. If we are not given a platform, we will make one. If people do not want to listen, we will yell and chant and march until they do. To quote the founder of this movement, Greta Thunberg, whose words are an anthem that we need to live by. I do not want you to be hopeful I want you to panic. We need to channel that panic into action. We must speak for ourselves. We cannot allow complacency to silence us. If we chant the same words, if we march to the same place, if we are united, we make our own power. If we are united, we make our own voice and we will be heard. So if you are tired of being told you are too young, let me hear you. If you are tired of looking into the sky and seeing clouds of smoke, let me hear you. If you want a future where you can go outside without a mask and sit on the grass in Dolores Park, if you want a future where you can live, let me hear you. Yeah.